fishy friend. Bad backs. A number of people I know have bad lower backs. I used to have a really bad lower back. I've had a bad lower back since I was 21 was my first hospitalisation. My last hospitalisation was at 50. I'm now 57. I haven't got a bad back. Six years ago I decided that my back was, had been injured for too, too long, over 30 years, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, I'd been addicted to codeine because of this. I was dancing with the big pharma giant for 30 years, resulting in terrible symptoms, depression being the obvious one, and bone density loss. Well, the last herniation, the last hospitalisation, was at 50, 50 years of age in uh, 2010. I'm 57, I've healed my spine, I've regained my bone density by going vegan. This is not about veganism, you will never get a judgement from me. I love meat. You will never get a judgement from me. However, I do believe it's a karmic conversation, a really big one, and it's going to get bigger as the years roll on. You wait. Okay, so bad backs. Let's focus on the lower lumbar. When your doctor says you've got lower lumbar issues, the lower lumbar is the area starting from the coccyx, which is your tailbone, up to your, just above where the belly button is. So this whole area is generally the lower lumbar, including the sacral bone, the sacrum. Sacred. Sacred. What's the worst thing for this part of the body? One guess. Two syllables. Two syllables. Sitting. <laughs> Two. It's just, we shouldn't be sitting all day long. We sit for too long. How many hours a day do you, how many hours in your life are you sitting? So you might scratch your head and go, why have I got a bad back, Doc? Well, unless you're gardening or teaching yoga or doing something, there's a lot of movement. There's your answer. You don't need to go to the doctor, my darlings. And some of you have a bad back because you live in the freezing cold climate. You can tell by what I'm wearing, it's freezing. Some of my friends have got bad backs from chopping wood. So they need good old-fashioned yin yoga stretches. But for the people who have chronic back issues, this is for you. I'm really worried about you because I was hospitalised three times in 30 years. I don't want you to have that experience. I don't want you to become addicted to codeine. It's horrible getting off it. It scares me now. It scares the hell out of me. Okay, so we're going to start by sitting up really tall and I want you to be able to, notice how my spine's really straight, that's years of ballet and yoga. Can you sit up against a wall? I want you to sit up against a wall now. So you're going to sit up against a wall everybody, let's determine how straight your spine is first. So you might find, my darlings, that when you sit up against the wall, your shoulders are two inches from the wall. So there's a problem, an alignment problem already. We must align. So, there's your first step. I want you leaning up against a wall now. I want the back of your head on a wall. Can you get your shoulders on a wall? And relax. Now, from this position, you can move your legs here. Okay? Now, I want you to figure out for yourself, on a scale from 1 to 5, what level of pain are you in here? How uncomfortable is it? What level of pain are you in? From one, one being, it's really comfortable. I have zero discomfort here. Although if I did this several years ago, I would, I would probably be doing this already. So the point is, what kind of props do you need? Um, this is where I'm going, okay? Hold that thought. I've got a futon cushion. Thank you, Melanie Mitchell. The gift giver of the century. <laughs> And look what I'm doing. I'm arching the back and I'm going to still lean against the wall. Does that feel better? So I want you people, please my darlings, to find your comfort zone. We always talk about comfort zones in, in our energy body and our emotional body. Well, can you find your comfort zone here? Because if you're going to fix your back, you have to get comfortable sitting like this. And if you can't, we'll, we'll rewind. If you're very inflamed, one word, arnica, arnica, arnica pilles, pilules, from the chemist, all day long. I've probably got a, a thing here. I do have, look, I've got all kinds of remedies here. I won't bore you with them. 
I did naturopathy, I didn't certify because when I realised what naturopathy was about when I was 26, I thought, I don't want to sit on it behind a desk fixing sick people. I'll do something else. And I was already doing yoga, so it evolved naturally. So I'm really glad I didn't become a naturopath because I'd be sitting at a desk. A lot of you are sitting at a desk. That's your problem, my darlings. Every opportunity you get, get out there. Get out there and walk. Okay, rewinding. Arnica is the greatest homeopathic, for me, it treats all injury all the time. Why am I not inflamed while it's five degrees out there? Why am I not in pain when I'm carrying 20 or 30 kilos of groceries every other day? Why am I not in pain? Arnica and Miracle Mist. Where is it? My um, uh, Karma Rubble Miracle Mist. Magnesium spray. Arnica, magnesium. Arnica, magnesium. Once we get the Arnica and magnesium story in the body, the muscles soften. But if you try and heal your body without first dealing with that, that energy story, because it's an energy, it's a, it's a tension, it's, a, it's an inflammation. We've done too much. The body seized up. Stretching, just stretching, isn't going to help. If I did just stretching with no homeopathics, I'd probably make my back worse. Arnica. Google it, please. Or go to your chemist or your health food store and get your Arnica pillies or pillules. Um, just on that, if I was going to take a, an anti-inflammatory from the chemist, I'd take one every 4 to 12 hours, right? Instant band-aid results. However, one of the reasons people tend to not want to use the pillies is because you have to take if, if you're acute, three every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes for the first couple of hours. Are we diligent enough to do that? Most people say, oh, that's too hard. And I say, well, then you suffer. Go back to Big Pharma, go back to the chemist, take your one pill, have a quick fix, and I'll see you in 10 years when you've got oste osteoporosis from all that pharmacology. Go organic, don't go to the pharmacy. Go to the, <laughs> go to the chemist, but get organic stuff. Okay, first posture. Okay, we've determined that you might need to sit on a pillow. I don't today, but I'm going to, because that's what I used to do. Because uh, sitting like that when my back was inflamed was bloody uncomfortable. Okay, I want you to start now gently. This is not a real yoga class. This is a remedial back class. So let's get rid of all the yoga uh, philosophy and, and trimmings. You're sitting comfortably. Now, you can do a little bit of Pilates with me. Suck your tummy and toe. Suck it in. I'm sitting up straight to remind you of how... I'm sitting sideways, uh, I think, to... My intention is to keep you um, aware of the straightness of my spine. I'm not slouching yet. Don't slouch. Suck it in. And lift the pelvic floor up. Hard. Suck it up. Suck it up. Harder, harder, harder. And at the same time, breathe. Don't hold your breath. So you've locked, it, you've locked it, all the tummy muscles in and you've locked your pelvic floor up. And now, how does that feel? Might feel better. Pilates really helps. I'm a Pilates instructor too. So we're going to interact, integrate Pilates into this. Alright, so that's just um, me. Uh, what I'm doing now is I can feel the musculature going, oh, lifting all the way up. So when we suck in the tummy and the pelvic floor, we've activated the core. The core muscles, the TVAs, there's all kinds of lovely musculatures that wrap around and, and support the spinal cord. You can imagine there's a lot going on, isn't there? Uh, but it starts in the core, the TVAs, the cross dominance. Uh, uh, what are they called? I can't speak in this position. I can't remember anything. I'm locking it up so tight. Erectus dominus? Oh, doesn't matter. Okay. Let it all go. I want you to know the, notice the difference between having an active core and a surrendered core. This is Pilates 101. So you've got a fat tummy now, haven't you? Sit here. Is your back on the wall again? By, by the way, if your legs are bothering you, do whatever you want with your legs. And by the way, if you're in excruciating pain, you shouldn't be doing any of this. If you're in excruciating pain, come and see me. Do some yoga. I mean real yoga. I think this teaching this way forgive me, is soulless. I'm the, if I had you in front of my room, I could see your aura and I could pick up exactly what you needed. I could pick up your left and right brain hemisphere balance or lack of by, by your movements. I would learn so much about you if you were here. 
It devastates me that I have to teach by videos. But that's the 21st bloody century. Okay. Relax. Soften. We've softened, so we've reactivated once and we're relaxed. We stay relaxed. Can you get your hands on the ground? So we're beginning to stretch. Can you go all the way forward? Now, this is safe, but if you're really okay, you'll go lower. And I might add, even if you can go really low, it doesn't really determine the state of your back because you might be naturally very limber. I'll say that again. I'm naturally limber, so even when my back was very bad, I could still go low. What, was, what the problem was, if I stayed there for a second too long, my back would be at risk. So I never went that low. Know the risks. If your back is... Uh, is, lot, is if you've got long-term pain, take your yoga, nice and shrink your yoga, please. Um, my second herniation was from a yoga class. My second hospitalisation was from, I'm not going to give you his name, it was an Iyengar class in Fitzroy, Collingwood Fitzroy. Okay, so yin. Yin will save you. I'm soft in the belly here. How does it feel? Does it feel okay? If it doesn't feel good, come up and lean against the wall. If it does feel okay, stay there. Three deep breaths. Slowly going around to the side. Is it hurting? If it's hurting, don't do it. Three deep breaths. And even if it looks like that, even if your stretch is like this maybe, maybe you're like that. It's okay. Because you're going forward. We're lengthening from the pineal to the tail. We're lengthening across. So think of your body as a bunch of lines. And then you'll understand how yin yoga can work. If we understand the nature of meridians and lines, uh, we then understand how easy stuff can actually make a big difference. So just lengthening. So that's the easy version, and this was the other version. Forward all the way around. A couple deep breaths. So wherever you go, whichever posture you land in, two or three deep breaths, valley nostrils. Okay, coming out of all of that. So, in relation to lower back work, if when my back was really, really sore and tired, I only ever really wanted to do one lower back, one forward bend stretch rather. I only ever wanted to do one forward bend stretch. You might have found that really uncomfortable. Um, general rule of thumb, if it hurts, you mustn't do it. Um, another reason why we don't, I don't like this kind of teaching is I can't see your face. If you were sitting right in front of me and you, in pain, you were in pain, even if you were trying to pretend to be brave, and most people do, I can tell. I've had a rotten back, and I've been the biggest actress of all for years, and I can tell if someone's trying to hide their pain. So I can save people in this room. Okay, this is lovely. We're going to hang out here. I want you to go here a little bit for a minute. This is lovely. Let's just rock from side to side. If your knees are on floorboards and you don't like that, well, all I've got to say to you is, what the? Can you get something padded under your body? Come on. Healing requires um, effort. If you think that you can do a back stretch yoga class on a hard timber floor, well, you're wrong. One of the reasons our backs get sore and tired and injured is because we didn't pay attention to them. I ignored my back for 30 years. Every time I got a pain, I took a pill. See how long I'm doing this? Now this feels fabulous. It's, it's just yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. Okay. So notice I'm on my elbows. Why am I on my elbows? You can do this on your hands. So this is the preparation for cat dog, yeah? But elbows. Try that first. One of the reasons we like elbows in my yoga classes is because most of us are over 50. 
I have had, I don't anymore, carpal tunnel, I've had both, operate, both wrists operated on. That wasn't a successful outcome. What, again, what, was, uh, what reduced the inflammation? It's only inflammation, carpal tunnel, it's only inflammation. Veganism, mm -hmm. organic, it's gotta be organic. If you're, a, if you're vegan and you're not organic, you're mad because the quality of vegan food that is not organic is deadly, deadly. In fact, I know a couple of very sick vegans who face that. Not going into vegan realm, no judgment there. Okay, so cat dog. Let's start here. Just gently tuck the tail under, and that'll feel great. And breathe. Let's stay here for three deep breaths. One of the things I want you to notice here is how I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm moving gently. I'm rocking. Really gentle. This is really not anything like Iyengar yoga, this work. Although if I stopped in the posture for two minutes, it would look like I end yoga. But my intention is different. I want your intention to be where the, where the um, problem is. You know, what does it feel like? And the second it doesn't feel good, my darlings, get a stupid chunk of stain off. Isn't it beautiful? Moonstar. When, when you're in a posture with me online, it's second. The nanosecond, it doesn't feel good. Stop what you're doing, come out slowly. Because your body's giving you a memo. Your body's, your body's giving you information every second of every day. But our culture will have us, our government, our beloved <laughs> leaders, will have us uh, ignoring the, um, the beautiful information the body gives us and take a bloody pill. I'm telling you, don't. Okay, from here, let's go and say, notice how long I'm there. I'm not rushing, am I? Slowly does it. Why is this so bloody slow? Well, yin yoga is not this slow. When I teach a normal class, I'm not this slow. This is remedial. This is for our backs. Okay. And now I'm arching the back. My back, <laughs> actually, I'm not a good example. My back is, a, actually, that's not true. I'll rub that phrase off the blackboard. I'm a fabulous example. The point is, my back doesn't look very bendy. That's what I meant to say. Notice it doesn't arch. Well, we can... Um, it started when I was 14 in the Australian Ballet School. That's when the first injury occurred. So uh, the, the, this, this weird looking spine, this is as arched as my back gets. Testament to how messed up it was. However, I do not experience any pain anymore. I have no more osteoarthritis. That feels like I've got a really arched back. It feels wonderful. So if you want, bend your elbows. We're not in a yoga class. We're in a remedial stretch class. Bend your elbows, arch your back, and hunch your back again. So we're going to go slow, 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 slow. When you feel like it, hunch again. Go slow. Lovely. Stay there for another three or four breaths. I'm having a wardrobe crisis. Actually, I think they're really pyjamas. <laughs> it's too cold out there. Okay, so you get the you get the meaning, don't you? If you did this just every once every day, oh, you'd be so much better off. Okay, from here, rest, resting, resting, resting. Okay, does that feel okay right here? Is this comfortable in your back right now? Right now, is that comfortable? My knees are a little bit apart. No cleavage just today. <laughs> um. I like to put, we like to put the knees apart, it's actually, this is the posture, it's not knees together. But that might be better for you. What feels better? And would it feel better if you did that even? If your back's really tender, you may not want to fold. So we'll just rest there for a minute. Either way, get comfortable. Again, I'm moving around. And when I do this, actually my back is a bit tender because I've been gardening. I've got a permaculture, I'm on a quarter acre permaculture garden. And to the last day before yesterday, I mowed all of the lawn with my pushy. I'm old school permaculture. And yeah, now that I'm stretching, oh, there's a tiny bit of soft tissue um, t tension, but it's only happening in the stretch, so it's good. I'm not injured. Um, oftentimes people come out of a yoga class and say, oh, yoga hurt my back. It's got, and I say, actually, well, 
yoga might have exposed, not in my class it wouldn't, yoga might expose a soft tissue injury from all the wood chopping and, and what have you is more likely. But we're very unlikely to get injured in this kind of class, do you agree? In fact, the, the sad thing is people want more than this. People want to do hot sweaty yoga and they go and do hot sweaty yoga and they disrupt their nervous system. They disrupt all of the meridians, they leave classes feeling nauseous, people actually throw up. It's fashionable to throw up at a, after a Bikram class. It's just, Im it's imbecile, I'm sorry, forgive me. If you're going to do hot yoga, go to the Northern Territory, go to Cairns, that's why I go to Magnetic Island. I do hot yoga every year on Magnetic Island. Bikram's an idiot. Okay, where were we? I digress, as usual. Okay, um, so that was nice, yeah? All right. Keeping it super easy, flat on backs. Pillow, so I can see you. Alright, hugging knees. Rocking from side to side. You're going to love this. Now you really do have to be on a padded surface, guys. You have to be somewhere soft. I'm going to put this under my sacrum to show you what I do for most of my students. When they're when they come into me with a bad back, the first thing I am, um, when, when someone says I'm in pain, inflammation is 100% a given. Pain is only ever present when there is inflammation of the area. So, does it hurt to put their delicate sacrum, sometimes 50 year old sacrums, or heavy sacrums, on the flat surface? Yes, padding, always padding. Padding's nice, my darlings. Rocking from side to side. That feels nice. Okay, here, notice what I'm doing. I'm going to bring my knees in and rock. I don't need that, it's annoying. It's ruining my alignment. So I'm rocking from side to side. My knees are close to my chest, breathing gently. You do need to be on a soft surface. Just a few rugs. Be creative. A futon mattress. I have a double futon mattress on the floor in front of my computer in the living room. And it's been there for seven years. And I walk all over it. Every other day I change the, um, the covers on it. I, you know, I put whatever needs to go on top of it. And I live on that because... Once you've injured your spine, and had an injured spine for 30 years, you are never going to sit again because you won't risk it. <sighs> no way. No way. <laughs> okay, I won't even go to cafes unless they've got a comfy chair. I walked past one of the cafes that was new in Hillsville and I desperately wanted to go there and I saw the cold metal seats and I thought, summer. I thought, no, cold metal seat equals sciatica. Even though I'm healed, are we ever 100% healed? No. Be cautious, my darlings. Cold metal seats in winter are going to aggra aggravate your sciatica. You've got to sit on something cosy. And even if you're only 20 years of age, wrap a, cup, wrap a big um, coat around your bum. You don't have to sit on an old lady's cushion. It's fashionable to have a coat wrapped around your bum, isn't it? Okay. We're going to drop all the way to the right. Knees on the ground. Left elbow on the ground behind me. Can you get your left shoulder down? So the whole arm is flat ideally. You don't have to have a pillow. So resting here for a moment, yeah? This is probably one of the best stretches for the back. Now depending on how much discomfort you're in today, um, will depend on how this looks. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'll give you a few examples. I'm not in any pain, so I can be like this. But I used to be in pain, so I was kind of like that, I think, yeah? Like that. Maybe like that. So, be where you are now. Now is the present moment. Now is the present. Now is the only gift. Okay. Bend over to the other side, elbow, shoulder. Can you get the elbow down? If that feels okay, then eventually the, the pillow or the hairdo will affect this process, trust me. 
If you've got dreads, give up. I'm joking. If you've got dreads, I'm jealous. No, that's, that's a joke too. I don't do jealousy anymore. On a good day. On a good day, I'm not a woman. On a good day, I'm an avatar human. On a bad day, I'm a 3D woman with jealousy and envy and all of it. It's wonderful. It's a roller, co roller coaster, isn't it? <laughs> it feels good. Who wants to come in? Who's crying? Sorry, I've got cats, a cat's butt. Hold that thought. What's going on? Come here, come inside. Come inside. Oh. I have five cats, but I also have a massive cat cage, a big net it cost me two and a half grand and there was a bird in the cat cage. Ha. That was what that noise was, noise was about. Okay, so we've done that both sides. Coming out into Supta Baddha Konasana. Supta Baddha Konasana. Supine butterfly. Laying down butterfly. Not dead butterfly. Laying down butterfly. <laughs> okay, and rest. Resting, resting, resting. Bring one leg bent, left leg into the left, right thigh, right leg out. Rest. Three or four deep breaths. Very good for your back. So the back, the hips, the legs are one. I want you to remember that if you do some good yoga leg work, which we're going to do right now, stretching on our backs, it will affect your back. Leg stretches will make your back so much better, I promise. Here we go. Oh, hello, darling. This is Sandy. Sandy's been a bit sick. Sandy eats every hour on the hour and has done for two or three years. It's costing me a fortune, but I love her. Sandy girl. And actually, you know what? I've said this two or three times in the last year. I think she's on the mend and then she gets bad again. But she's got more meat around here than she has on the other side of her spine. So she's actually able to, so the calories are getting in. Um, and she's purring more. Last night she purred a lot. Okay, so you've had your, that's nice and comfy, yeah? That's a nice way I actually sleep like this. Yin yoga. Who knew? Did you know you were already doing it? <laughs> Alrighty, moving on. Who went to karate? Karate belts are useful or grab a tie. Okay, one leg in, up you go. So if you've got a short hamstring, it'll look like this. These are leg stretches, but they don't have to be straight. What, what, what we're trying to achieve here, my darlings, is a stretch. So if your stretch looks bent, so be it. And if you think that you need to get it straighter but it hurts, you're in your ego and you should stop immediately and turn this video off because you're not behaving. Bend your bloody knee if it hurts. If you've got a long hamstring, do that. But if you've got a really short hamstring, like 50% of my students, I will not let them try and force it straight. I say, can you feel it in your leg? Oh, yeah. Well, that's it. As soon as you can feel it, it's working. This idea of being a perfect yogi, let's blame the glossy yoga magazines. Let's throw them all out. Let's burn them. <laughs> They've done more harm than good. Every time I pick one up, I think, well, if I can't do the front cover posture, 80% of the populace can't. So what's that saying about yoga? I mean, is it misinformation? Who's doing this? Sorry, I can't help myself. Nice and long. Or oh, that might feel that might feel like a good stretch. Okay, so let's pretend we're midway. Got your tie or your belt. You do need something. Look, I can grab my foot, but I still want to have my arms passive. If I start doing that, I activate my um, lung and heart meridians. I don't want to do that. I want to stay all yin and be all wobbly in the arms. There's none of this hot, you know, yanga yoga, we grab the toe with the two fingers. Oh, for God's sake. Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, moving the leg across the body gently. Now, I didn't.